Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today we are discussing the burning of Falmouth, Massachusetts, a city we now know as Portland, Maine, a time I like to refer to as Mowat's Revenge, because unlike most videos where we discuss an American patriot, the star of today's tale is a gentleman named Henry Mowat, who was a captain of a British naval fleet. Now, Mowat had been in Falmouth well, just a few months earlier, as we discussed in a recent video about Samuel Thompson's war, and he was essentially taken hostage for a few hours until he agreed to get on his ship and leave. And he did. And that was just a few weeks after Lexington and Concord. Six months later, Mowat comes back for revenge. He comes back to Massachusetts, uh, I'm sorry, Falmouth, Massachusetts, where he tells the people in the city, I'm here, and I'm not very happy, so... Give me your guns and your ammunition and all your gunpowder and a few hostages who he wanted very specifically for having taken him hostage in church just six months earlier. Now, the Patriots said, no, thanks, we're not going to do that. But before you destroy our town, which he made it clear he was going to destroy the town, before you destroy the town, can we have a little bit of time to get the women and children out of town? You don't want to be killing women and kids, do you? And Henry Mowat had no interest in killing women and children, so he gave them 48 hours. In that time, pretty much everyone left the city, and at 9 a.m. on October 19th, 1775, he starts bombarding the town with cannon fire. He does this all day long until he disembarks some marines who go into the town and set it ablaze. Now, to the Patriots' credit, despite being vastly outnumbered and having absolutely no resistance to massive cannon fire, they do put up a fight against the Marines, uh, killing one and wounding another, though by the time the Marines m retreat, the city is on fire. And I say city loosely, because although it was kind of a remote town, at least 300, if not up to 400 buildings burned in this blaze, destroying half the town and leaving upwards of a thousand people homeless. Now, this is just before winter sets in, in Maine. So... There was, they needed shelter and they needed food to eat. And they send word, they send for help. And word arrives at George Washington at this time is still sieging Boston with the Continental Army. Uh, and they ask him to send some, so any help you can get, George, anything you can do. Now, it's about this time, and well, it's exactly this time, actually, that a delegation had been sent from the Continental Congress to Boston to discuss with George Washington how they can approve the American forces. And this delegation included Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Harrison, and Thomas Lynch. And while they were there, they were having this conversation about how they can help. Word arrives of the burning of Falmouth, and there were a good amount of soldiers from that part of Maine who had come to serve with the Continental Army, and they all very quickly begged leave. Now, as, well, as Benjamin Franklin wrote back to the Continental Congress in his report, it was, quote, too reasonable a request to be refused. Uh, so they definitely let these people go, you know, feed and shelter their children. <laughs> um, uh, it still was struck fear into the hearts of the uh, Americans. There was a real concern at the time, and although it happened from time to time, it, it didn't come to fruition quite as often as they predicted, but there was a major concern that this would be a British strategy, just sailing their massive navy up and down the coast, destroying all the coastal cities. At the time, most towns and cities were close to the coast. This was a very real fear. Because of the burning of Falmouth and the report back within a month of the burning of Falmouth, John Adams leads the charge with several other important colleagues to create the Continental Navy as a direct result of the burning of Falmouth. Now, there were other influences that led to the creation of this army, uh, as opposed to just having privateer ships sailing around trying to take one British ship at a time. The Continental Navy was uh, really meant to defend the coasts. That was to varying degrees of success. Uh, it wasn't the greatest navy in the history of the world, although the Continental Navy did have a few wins there, so we got to give them that thumbs up. But essentially, that is the story of Falmouth. It takes 20 years for them to rebuild, eventually renaming themselves Portland and becoming Portland, Maine, instead of Falmouth, Massachusetts. But uh, it was a very trying time in that part of the world, a very remote part of the United States or future United States in 1775. And fortunately, they were able to survive despite having limited supply lines, limited access to money. I mean, they were a port city. Everything came in on boats and 
there weren't a lot of boats coming in when the British were sailing around. So that's the story of the burning of Falmouth, a really horrifying moment for the people of that town and a really important part of the American Revolution. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like so more people can learn about the video. And if you're new here, subscribe for more American Revolution seven days a week. I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.